Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Airport Safety Channel. I am your host, Isaac Otu, and it is a privilege to welcome you to today's lesson. How well do you know your facility? We have been looking at parts of a runway. We have been using an X-14 Volume 1 Aerodromes 9th edition. Currently on Chapter 3, and today we will be looking at the blast part. The blast part. Previously, we treated stopways, and we got to know that a runway stopway is a defined surface beyond the end of the runway that was designed to be suitable for supporting an aircraft without damaging that aircraft during an aborted takeoff. A stopway is located before the strip and the RISA. For more knowledge, go to our previous lesson and you will earn more on this topic. Today we are treating the blast part. The blast part. And Annex 14 provides a note for the blast part definition. It says the area provided to reduce the erosive effects of jet blast and propeller wash may be referred to as a blast pad. On this screen, the question is, is there a blast pad? The answer is no. Before the beginning of the runway, you will observe that the entire location is eroded. This is due to the effect of jet blast. A jet blast or propeller wash is the force or wind generated behind a jet engine or propeller blades, particularly on or before takeoff and during taxiing. So anytime the aircraft moves, it generates jet blast. This has the effect of washing away the top soil, causing erosion. Therefore, if the area is protected, the impact of the jet blast will be reduced. Well-prepared surfaces are protected from erosion. Exposed surfaces may be protected by compacting or paving the surface. You can see that once the area beyond the runway is paved, the effect of erosion is reduced at that location. However, pavements used for blast paths are usually not strong enough for frequent use of aircraft. Only emergency vehicles are able to use it, not frequent movement of aircraft. Annex 14 recommends that that portion of a strip to at least 30 meters before the start of a runway should be prepared against blast erosion in order to protect a landing aeroplane from the danger of an exposed edge. We have previously studied that the strip at the end of the runway extends up to 60 meters. Annex 14 is recommending that 30 meters of that 60 meter strip should be paved in order to protect the runway from erosion, which will lead to exposed runway edges that can harm or damage aircraft. The location in question has been the place or the means of frequent debate in my experience. Many people see this marking, the chevron marking on the left at this location and wonder whether it is a stopway, a blast pad or something else. 
Now let's look at what Annex 14 says. Annex 14, Chapter 7, Section 3.1 recommends that when the surface before a threshold is paved and exceeds 60 meters in length and is not suitable for normal use by aircraft, the entire length before the threshold should be marked with a chevron marking. Chevron marking. So that the area that is marked with this kind of marking indicates that it is not a surface that is intended for normal use by aircraft. Even though it is before the threshold and it is paved, it's not intended for normal use by aircraft. Therefore, it can serve as a blast pad. A paved blast pad less than 60 meter may not require or have chevron marking. So if you see a blast pad that does not have a chevron marking, it tells you that the length of that blast pad is less than 60 meters and therefore it is not actually recommended. Even a blast pad may not be paved in the first plate, it may be compacted sufficiently to resist erosion and not paved and therefore may not be marked. 60 meter marking, that is the chevron marking, may serve as a secondary reminder to pilots that there is no stopway at the end of the runway. Stopways do not carry this marking. So when you see this marking immediately after the threshold of the runway, it should tell you that there is no stopway at the end of the runway. And the marking may also alert pilots that though the location is paved, it is not a displaced threshold. That location is also not a displaced threshold. The only purpose it is serving is that of a blast pad. That of a blast pad. In summary, a runway blast pad is a surface near the ends of runways provided to reduce the erosive effect of jet blast and propeller wash. That is a blast pad for you. Thank you for coming this far and I'll give you the bullet for today, which is a definition. We are looking at aerodrome certificate. Annex 14 defines aerodrome certificate as a certificate issued by the appropriate authority under the applicable regulations for the operation of an aerodrome. Go to the comments and let me know who the appropriate authority is in your jurisdiction. Which applicable regulations in your country are used before an aerodrome certificate is provided? And is your aerodrome certificated? Let me know that in the comments. Thank you for watching. Post your comments and questions. Subscribe and click the bell. Share with one and all.